Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your Cornerstone Community Church service for September 12th. That's right. And we're going to open our time with a word of prayer, get right into our songs and worship the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you today for the word of God. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to share with us today, the songs that are sung and the blessing upon this service in Jesus name. Amen. Well, I want to invite you to our in-person service. It is at Cornerstone Hall, number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. And our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. It is an in-person service. We'd love to have you join us. We're going to start our time off today with blessed be your name. And it is the name of the Lord that we should be honoring and glorifying today. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in that desert place though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in low, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, bless you. That's a marvelous, marvelous song. And now we're going to do another one that I haven't done for a little while called Shout to the North. And this is a great song because we want to worship the Lord. Men of faith, rise up and sing of that great and glorious King. You are strong. Jesus 
song where we want to let every direction know that we are servants of the living God and that we have something to say to everyone today. Well, it's time for the word of God. We're going to find ourselves today in Psalm 112, looking at verses 7 and 8. But before we do that, let's open our time with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the word of God. And we ask that, Lord, your blessing would rest upon it today and the presentation of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we just have two messages left in our summer in the our summer in the Psalms series. Now we've been looking at Psalms 111, which is an acrostic psalm talking about the characteristics of God, and also as well Psalm 112, which is a response to the truth that we have learned in Psalm 111. Now, again, summarizing, Ezra is the author of these two psalms, and he had an objective. Now, what he did was he used the Hebrew alphabet in two forms. Number one, he used a corresponding letter and then brought a wonderful truth about God. One was, of course, in this, to us to teach the people and learn the Hebrew language. And secondly, that they would also know the God who they really didn't know. You see, they had just returned from 70 years in Babylon and Persia, and they had been living in a polytheistic society, and now they were thrust into a monothe monotheistic um, situation, and so it was a total relearning situation. They did not actually know their own language, religion, or culture. So this is how Ezra uh, chose this method to accomplish its aims and goals. So today we're going to learn five truths from Psalm chapter 112, verses 7 and 8. The first one is this, and I love this. They will have no fear of bad news. When someone knows the Lord, fear is no longer part of our vocabulary. We have not been given a spirit of fear, but love, power, and of a sound mind. From Paul, we learn that fear is a spirit and can only be overcome by God's love. Or as John put it in 1 John 4, 18, perfect love casts out all fear. Then fear is rendered powerless through God's plan. And lastly, it is neutered with by a sound mind. Now the righteous do not have to fear bad news because they know that God is with them. They trust him with all their heart. They acknowledge him and they allow him to direct their path. They know that the Lord will never leave them or forsake them. And they also know that all things work together for good. Doesn't mean all things are good, but all things work together for good. Now, 
bad news will not shake them because they have the presence, the power, the peace, and the promises of God. I love that, to know that the promises of God are yes and amen. The righteous always anchors themselves in the love, the faith, and the hope they have in God. Also as well, because we know love never fails, it bad news causes no fear. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We also know that angels are camping around us. We are the apple of God's eye and we are in the palm of his hand. See, God is directing our path. So no accusation, no temptation or deception will work because we have, of course, all the armor. We have the armor of God, we have prayer, we have the Bible, we have anointing, we have powerment, we have authority, we have enablement and divine help. So we don't have to worry about that old bad news. Secondly, their hearts are steadfast and they're trusting in the Lord. You see, the righteous have a heart that is secured in the Lord. In fact, our hearts have a rock, a fortress, and a refuge in the Lord. Remember, where the heart is or the issues of life come from the heart. The heart is where the treasure is. So when you have your heart and will and intellect emotions in God's hands, then your time, your talents and resources also belong to him. When a heart belongs to God, the past is forgiven, the present is a gift, and the future is eternal. A righteous heart is steadfast, it is loyal, it is committed, is faithful, devoted, dedicated, and dependable. The righteous have a maturity, a stability, a resolve, a firmness that is unwavering. They can sing in prison like Paul and Silas did. They can trust like Abraham. They fight like Gideon and they worship like David and are wise like Solomon. Now, it says here also as well, they trust the Lord. Now, Ezra wants his audience to trust the Lord. Trust means a firm belief in the reliability, the truth, the ability, and the strength of someone. In our case, it's God. The most familiar verse I'd like to share with you, of course, is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 was, trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding, but always acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Now, trust has so many wonderful benefits. For example, delight, freedom, peace, joy, faith, love, grace, and of course, blessing. Faith and trust are actually interchangeable. And you know the world and the flesh and the devil want to destroy you, but you also know that God is working on your behalf. And like a child, you simply trust the Lord. Like Noah, you take God at his word, even though you don't see any rain. You have the firm conviction that all things are going to work together, uh, even if at the time they seem bad. The psalmist says this, sorrow is only for a night, but joy comes in the morning. He also said the mercies of God are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. You know, a new day is always a new start. Now, I love this. Moses trusted the Lord for 40 years, and there were times his faith was stressed and stretched, but in the end, God used him to build a nation ready to take the land. Faith says, I will trust you, God, and the process. And you know that you are you are what you are doing in the end you win i came across this wonderful facebook post this week at this point jesus doesn't jesus doesn't just need to take the i love that it says jesus doesn't need to take the wheel he needs to pull over and spank some of you with his flip flops <laughs> i thought that was interesting all right the next one is number four. Their hearts are secure and they have no fear. You see, mankind has three basic needs. Food, shelter, clothing, transportation is the first. The second need is safety and security. And the last is self-esteem or actualization. When these three needs are met, we feel fulfilled. 
When the heart belongs to God, these things are not only met, but exceeded. That's why Paul said that God can do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we're able to ask or even imagine. So when we feel secure, we don't have any fear. Fear is caused by insecurity or a feeling of being unloved, a loss of control or power. The natural state of man when faced with uncertainty or danger is either to fight or to flee. Well, when you feel secure, empowered, and control, you don't have any control. David, when he fought Goliath, knew he could beat him. Why? Because he had already beaten a lion and a bear. And this experience was a great, big, huge factor. But he also knew that God would defeat the enemy. And basically what he was saying to Goliath, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. He also knew that he was fighting Goliath in the power of God. With God for us, who can be against us? And then it says, the last one says, and in the end, they will triumph over the foes. You see, Ezra reminded his audience that in the end, we win. At the end of the book, people of God are victorious. Ezra says, don't lose hope in the middle of the battle. You have to run the race and fight the fight and do the whole competition to win the tournament or the prize. You know, just this last week, a young phenom named Lila Fernandez got to the finals of the U.S. Open. Two years back, Bianca Andrescu won it. They had to play through a week of grueling tennis matches to get to the final. You can't quit in the middle. Life does not give you a ribbon for trying. There are only two rules in life. Never give up and remember rule number one. And did you know that there are crowns given to those who finish the race as Christians? For example, the crown incorruptible, I should say, yeah, crown incorruptible, which means being saved. The crown of righteousness, those who love his coming. The crown of life, those that are given to endure temp, 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 testing, persecution, and trial. The crown of glory given to those who carry the gospel and the crown of rejoicing given at the end of the of faithful service. There are many rewards given to the overcomer. Some people have asked me, uh, have asked me, what's in it for me? Everything, church. You get eternal and abundant life. You get a de declaration of being a good servant and reward for resting in the Lord. On the other side of the veil, you have peace, you have beauty, love, friendship, and security. You know, I've had two dreams. I've had a dream of heaven and also a vision of heaven. And in both places, uh, in both the dream and the vision, God is was wonderful. When I had the vision, I saw a beautiful place with beauty and love and peace and joy and victory. And when I had my dream about heaven, I discovered it only takes a moment of time to get there. But when you get there, it is beyond description. It's like the song says, you are beautiful beyond description. Well, heaven is beautiful beyond description. And that's what's waiting for you. And that's what's waiting for me. And that's the blessed hope. And that's what I want to leave with you today. That if you know Jesus Christ, of course, you are gonna be with him. You are gonna reign with him and rule with him. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, this is that moment where you can give your life to him. I'd like you to pray this prayer with me and give your life to Jesus. Dear Lord, I thank you today for Jesus Christ. In this moment, I am receiving you as my Lord and my Savior, as it says in Romans 10, 9 and 10. I do believe in my heart and I do confess my, my, my mouth that you are Lord. And thank you today for the eternal and abundant life that only you can bring. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. Well, I'd like to sing to you a song. Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. In every breath that I take, every moment I
This is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have. of the program where I pray for you and I would love to be able to do that right. So right now, if your need is, need is physical, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, financial, or family, right now the Lord can meet your need and not only meet it, but do it exceedingly. He's also your healer. First Peter 2.24 says, by your stripes and heal. So right now, I want you to receive his healing. So Father, we thank you today for the wonderful healing that you bring and your provision. In this moment, we are receiving both your provision and your healing. We want to thank you, Lord, for that. And we want to thank you, Lord, today for the wonderful way that you're meeting every need according to your riches and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, I want to encourage you to come to our in-person services. If you are in the greater Edmonton area or St. Albert, we meet at Cornerstone Hall, number 6 Tashay Street in downtown St. Albert. We're known as the church in the heart of the city. Our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. Well, we'll close off with more power. More love, more power.
Well, thank you for so much for spending time with me today. And I ask the Lord's blessing upon you now. So Father, once again, we thank you for the word of God. And we thank you, Lord, for what you shared with us and the wonderful word that we've heard today. Now we ask your blessing, Lord, upon our service and this day in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you again for coming and spending time with me. God bless you and have a great and godly day.